Hello friends and family, mostly family watching this probably, but friends as well, and some people who are future friends, I hope. Was that an okay intro? I think that was fine. Hi guys, welcome back to EcoBoost. My name is Kate Arnell. So today's video is called the Zero Waste Tag. I'm actually super new to the whole tag thing on YouTube. Um, the last time I did anything to do with tag, it was probably in a school playground and I was most definitely it. So as far as I'm aware, the Zero Waste Tag was started by another YouTuber called Snapshots of Simplicity and it sounds like a great idea to sort of get the whole Zero Waste community uh, sharing their story and we're all different basically so it's quite nice to hear different people's takes on it and yeah, that was a great idea. Bravo, snapshots of simplicity. Excellent, excellent idea. So I was tagged to do this video by Going Zero Waste, AKA Catherine Kellogg, who has got an incredible blog, which has just got so much awesome zero waste related information on it. I followed her for some time, so I was actually thrilled and pleasantly surprised and also a little bit nervous at the same time when uh, EcoBoost was called out, was tagged at the end of her video. So um, let's do this. Can't find the questions. Where are the dang questions? First up, what got you started? I was already very enthusiastic about organic food and eating seasonally. Um, it was something that I was still learning a bit about, but that was very much where my focus was. And then um, my husband came home with a newspaper. There's a free one in London called The Evening Standard, I think, or it might have been The Metro. They're both free. They're kind of handed out on the tube. And there was an article in that um, about Bea Johnson and her family and there was a picture of her annual waste in the jar and it just caught my eye and stirred something up in me a little bit that was like hey who knew that was even possible so I found that really interesting and then about two weeks later I was in Richmond just having a little poodle around in the sunshine and I walked past a charity shop and I don't always go in charity shops but for some reason I'd walked past this one a couple of times I was like I'm just gonna go in I'm just gonna go in I don't know why I just have an urge to go in and on display at the back was uh, this book Zero Waste Home by Bea Johnson and I just felt drawn to it a little bit and I picked it up had a little flick through and I was like yeah I'm really intrigued by this so I bought that from a charity shop, which feels like it was so sort of on point. It was a great place okay. to find a zero waste home book. So finding this and then going online and finding out more about the concept of zero waste just really made me realise that there were other ways of doing things. If I wanted to buy organic, I didn't have to buy it wrapped in plastic from the supermarket. I could make choices that really aligned with my values. That book uh, was a bit of a game changer for me. Most memorable moment. Uh, I think it was the first time I tried to shop without packaging in a supermarket. I was really keen to start shopping without packaging and maybe bringing some of my own containers and I went into my regular supermarket and I went up to the either the deli counter or the butcher's counter or something like that and asked them to put whatever item I'd chosen into my glass jar. And for whatever that old health and safety excuse they said they couldn't and I just felt a little bit frustrated and a bit lost. I was like, where am I going to get food from? I was a little bit panicked. So at that moment it twigged. I was like, supermarkets are not the place for me to lead a zero waste lifestyle. That was the epiphany moment. So I started to look into local farmers markets and also local farm shops. We have an abundance of farmers markets here in London. It's insane. I'll put a link in the description box to the London farmers markets website. And I think now if I was trying to shop in a supermarket and I do have to go in maybe once every six months if I want to buy some vinegar in a glass jar, <laughs> It's like walking into the future with the bright lights and the aisles and the boop, boop, boop. Favourite bulk purchase? Oh no, the battery's running out. It gives me time to think. I'll be right back. Okay, so where was I? Favourite bulk purchase? I've got two, if that's okay. I don't know what the rules and regs are here, but I'm going rogue. I've got two. Popcorn, although I'm running it dangerously low. So popcorn is one of my favourite snacks and I think before going zero waste, I don't think I even knew how easy it was to make. I've recently started making it with melted butter instead of coconut oil and it tastes incredible. And coffee. I feel like coffee beans are really accessible bulk items, so even if you go to a shop 
that doesn't normally sell bulk items, often they'll still have loose coffee beans. And I really enjoy the process of grinding them up, I either do it in my blender if I'm feeling really lazy, or I'll use my little hand grinder, which really makes me feel like I've earned my coffee, but I'm not up for doing it every morning, so I do use the blender from time to time. Um, probably more often than the hand blender, but anywho. Most recommended zero waste item. So again, I'm choosing two items because I couldn't decide between them, and they're both cups. Uh, I got two kinds of cups, both very different, do not get them confused. I don't think this one will be accepted at a coffee house near you, just don't try it. But this is my coffee cup, it's a reusable keep cup, and it has been with me since the very early days of going zero waste. And it's the sort of thing that I think is very approachable and actually quite cool. Like, a lot of people see this cup and they're like, hey, that's a cool cup, where'd you get that? I'd like one. And in fact, two friends recently, after seeing this, were like, hey, we got some of those cups, we really liked them, and we'd never thought about how we were throwing away so many cups before. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I hadn't even said anything to them, it was just me using a cup. Moving on to the other cup, this is the menstrual cup. This is the sort of thing that once people have tried it, the usual reaction is, how did I not know about that before? It's awesome. I think the money saving factor is a big win for this. And the fact that it's so comfortable is another big win. And the fact that you're not throwing away so much other than the contents is another big win. I think this has got so many uh, plus points to it. And the feedback I've heard from other people who've tried it has been like, this isn't a compromise, this is an upgrade. I have done a whole other video about how much I love the menstrual cup and why it rocks my world. Uh, so feel free to have a little watch if you want, um, or just read up about them. What keeps you motivated? Well, I get up every day, I do 18 press-ups, and then I sit and read about zero... No, I'm joking. I do have a genuine curiosity. So I find that in my downtime, I'm probably reading about something to do with zero waste, or something that's to do with organic or eco-friendly or whatever. That's a natural interest. It doesn't feel like I have to motivate myself too much, if at all, really. Although in the beginning, I definitely did have to motivate myself. And I did that by just doing one thing at a time. I was like, okay, today I need to buy some chicken. So I know which butcher I'm going to go to. And I'm going to make sure I take a container big enough for the chicken that I need. And that's what I have to do today. That's all. And once I found the right reusable container to suit my situation, so I found taking cloth bags and stainless steel tins much easier than taking like glass jars with me. It just kind of became normal. I think I'm driven or motivated mostly by my values and knowing that if I buy a product from a brand that has values that don't sit quite right with mine, I don't feel good about buying that product or I don't feel good about investing in that company. So I've learned that sometimes it might be easier to take a shortcut or just do something anyway um, out of convenience and then I actually don't feel that great afterwards. So I feel like the feel good factor is probably what keeps me motivated. Oh, and being kind to myself. There will be times when I can't operate in my normal zero waste fashion. I think it's too easy to beat yourself up about the things you feel like you should be doing or the things that you're not doing or you could have done something better. When actually, when I look at everything that I've changed and how far I've come, I can give myself a little bit of credit for that. I think there's a lot that actually keeps me motivated, but a lot of it comes quite naturally and without even really thinking about it. It's not like a, oh, I've got to stay motivated, I'm losing my... I will to live here. So that was a very long-winded answer to what keeps me motivated. I've just been on a journey of discovery through that zero waste tag and it's time for me to tag some peeps. Are you ready? I would like to tag uh, Holly Rose aka Leoti Lovely who's got a wonderful blog. She's been doing a project called hashtag gone green 2016 and she's been doing a blog post every single day um, focusing on different alternatives to living a greener lifestyle, basically. And she, along with several other people from the Ethical Writers Co, have given Zero Waste a go recently. So Holly, you've been tagged. Next up, Simpler Greener Mum, a fellow Zero Waster that I met at a Zero Waste event earlier this year. She's also on YouTube, check her out. And I find it really interesting that she has got children and she's bringing zero waste into her life and 
just how she's managing that. And finally, another person who's on a zero waste journey is Ali Cherry. Um, she hasn't got a clue who I am, and I don't know if she'll watch this, but I'd like to tag her. I really like her chilled approach to zero waste. And hey, if you're kind of getting into the world of zero waste, or maybe you've been at it for some time, then please feel free to answer the questions in the comments below. I think it's really interesting to hear everybody's uh, take on zero waste and how they have found it. So yeah, put that in the comments if you fancy sharing because Lord knows I've shared enough with you today and I really should be cracking on with stuff, you know. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, I'd love you to just think about subscribing. Just kind of plant the seed, think about it for a while and then hit that red button. And um, if you've enjoyed this on any level, any level, like even like down here, but a mild enjoyment, then hit that thumbs up and I'll see you soon. I've got to go and make popcorn and coffee now. These guys, these guys.